comrades, and welcome back to Ushanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. В эфире программа Ушанка Show. So today I'll be doing unboxing. I got this surprise a parcel all the way from the United Kingdom. I didn't know what's coming. And then I knew what's coming, but I didn't know what's in there. And finally it's here. I have some time to open up. And let's take a look what we got. It's probably gonna be the most emotional uh, unboxing I've ever done. I didn't do many of those, but this item, I mean, I know now what's in there. I used to own, I purchased myself back in 1989 for 150 rubles, which was a lot of money back then. It was average monthly salary of the Soviet worker. So picture maybe, I don't know, three, five thousand dollars. And I used it and enjoyed it for many, many years. And then uh, when I left for America, uh, my brother sold it. He needed money and the thing didn't work right and he decided to get rid of it. And at that time I didn't think much of it, but recently I, with my Oshanka show and stories about Soviet Union, <laughs> I was kind of getting more and more upset that I uh, lost this item. So let's go and uh, take a look what we got. As I said once again, it came all the way from United Kingdom. By the way, I want to mention before I open it, some people talked about being careful if it came from Northern Ireland uh, or the only silly item I expect to get from United Kingdom will be, I think it's called sponge dick. Uh, they have this weird uh, cake they sell in a can in England and sometimes you could see it at the stores here in America, uh, but it's not sponge dick and it's not a surprise explosive device from Ireland. It's something very, very cool. And while we're on the subject of Kiev, K-E-Y-V. Uh, so this is another example of uh, Russification. So this item was made in Kiev, Ukraine, but instead of uh, being written in Ukrainian, Kiev, like right now it's, a lot of people correct me every time I write Kiev, but I grew up with Kiev and it's gonna stay uh, with me forever. I can't think of my hometown as Kyiv. It was always Kyiv. And uh, even my car has a license plate, Kyiv. Okay, so let's, really good packing. Hopefully it crossed the ocean undamaged. You're probably getting ideas what it is. Some people maybe already figure out. Okay, so this is a camera, the Soviet camera made in Kiev, Ukraine, factory called Arsenal. And that's the original case, just like I remember I had. Well built, great shape. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, there it is right here. Exactly like mine. One for one. Uh, they had little design changes over the years, not much, but they had some. So mine looked just like that. Um, and I mentioned that's Seller Toho, that's the model from 1987. Based on the serial number, which is 87, 81, 86. And I got mine in 89. So that's a so-called SLR, single lens reflect camera. Let's hear the sound. Yep. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so you got a hot shoe, I think it's called, for your uh, flash, connector for your flash. Helios, uh, Gilius lens. This is a Nikon mount. It just happened that um, this camera was inspired by the Nikon design, so they utilize the same mount 
So technically, I have actually an icon camera. Uh, I can play, see if my lens will fit in there. It has a compartment for the battery. There's, of course, tripod. And then we have a, well, I think if, see if I remember how to pop this open. I think that's the button to unlock. <laughs> nice and heavy. <laughs> wow. My good old days. Young, free, and ready for adventure. Comrade Sergei and his camera, Kiev 19. Look at that beauty. Great shape, my goodness. I'm surprised it's... Well, I'm not surprised if you pay $3,000 for the item, usually you keep this item in a good shape. It's sad, but after so many years, I don't remember how exactly to pop the lid open. I need to look at the paperwork. I actually... It does look like it came with paperwork, but I have a, my original one uh, from my camera. I think it's this button needs to be pushed, but something else needs to be done. Uh, maybe there was a slider. Wow, I'm getting old, don't remember. But other features, uh, this camera had a measurement. You could measure your settings for the light, pushing this little uh, thing and then inside it will tell you. But I got pretty proficient with this camera. I could just, well, camera and generally uh, taking pictures, I could just look outside. Uh, the bright sunshine and decide depending on what film I have. I believe this is a film setting, so you set what film you have and that's effects. Um, so you see up to 500 and then you got your settings here. And then of course then you open your lens aperture and then you focus your camera, just like my camera phone struggling to focus on this camera. So it, it took some, um, you know, knowledge and experience to take pictures with such cameras. There was no autofocus, yeah, but I had some great pictures. I took mostly black and white and I took some Orvos uh, German slide films. And most pictures I was taking, of course, were in Ukraine, in the village, and I came with this camera to America. And all my pictures that I showed from the United States when I work at the summer camp, Camp Rosenthal, they were done with uh, this camera, Kiev 19. Hey, so I played with the camera for a little bit and uh, it's all came back to me. It's all, what is that expression? Muscle memory. So you need to pull your film rewinder device and this is how it looks inside. Standard dealio, then we advance film. There you go. And that's of course a little film rewinder. My goodness, wow. <laughs> okay, I need to go down to my basement and uh, locate my, uh, some old film. We can install it just for the heck of it. Okay, so here's my old Soviet Air films. That's a Soviet black and white. Sviema. That was, I believe, pretty much the only brand you could purchase of the film. 36 shots, 35 copics for the film. So it's black and white. So every shot is one copic, pretty much. Summer of. 1989, Leta So you see, you have a little spot for notes. Open and develop in the darkness. It's a good idea. And most popular was 64. I believe all mine are 64s. 
Then some of them, I lost the box, so I just wrapped it in a newspaper. How about that? 1998. There's some codex. That's probably, I brought it. Oh, here you go. Look at that timing. So I took these pictures in United Kingdom in May of 1998. Uh, before I came to America in 1998, I went to England to visit a girl that I worked at a camp in the previous summer. I stayed in London and I went to Stirling, Scotland, and this is the pictures that I took there. I think this was color. I probably need to make a video about whole photography uh, stuff in the Soviet Union, but most people did black and white and they purchased film, then they developed and print black and white pictures at home. Uh, that was pretty easy, I mean, comparatively speaking. Uh, developing color and printing color at home was little impossible, it was too complicated. My uh, uncle Misha, he did that. But he was doing it for his job because he was so yeah i developed all this film myself and actually that's is why i'm talking to you from michigan is because i got hired first summer in 1995 as a photography specialist the fact that i knew how to develop film and print black and white pictures that's what attracted attention of camp director and I worked in 1995 as a photography specialist in Camp Rosenthal. If you read my book, American Diaries 1995, that's the whole story of me being in camp for inner city kids from Chicago and Prognos Pagode in 1998. <laughs> it's interesting, like, almost like on purpose, I even used the newspaper that tell you the date. Now that's funny. This is 1998 and you probably recognize the vehicle. And that's advertising for the Ford Explorer. So we had a Ford dealership. So 98, this is a Soviet Union gone for seven years. We had, uh, the dealership was called Winner Ford. And uh, they advertise Ford Explorer. Everything has <laughs> Interesting background. Oh my goodness, wow. That was some advertised newspaper because here you got some uh, cars for sale. Audi 80 from 1989 with 127,000 kilometers. Audi 100, BMW 318, BMW 730. So as you see, that's that when the German Second-hand cars flooded the market and they killed Lada. And this is the film. I'm trying to take, keep it on the edge so you don't... Uh... Oh my goodness, I'll have to print all that again. Let's see, I think it's upside down. Wow, wow. Yep, that's the... You could see Pishanka village, so that's pictures taken in a village. I need to find who still prints these photos, black and white, send them. Had it all reprinted. Some of them, I remember having some of these pictures, some of them low, that's my friends. I think this is Comrade Sergei right here. This one didn't turn out well. You see the difference between digital and film. Some shots that don't turn out well. So this is your one copy wasted. One time I tried to uh, take pictures of the lighting and I wasted the whole film. And then of course I developed, um, I was trying to catch the lighting. So every time I see lighting, I push the shutter and I never could catch it but of course you don't see it because it's not digital camera you don't have a screen so here it actually tells you you need to develop the film uh, before June of 1992 and I took this picture in summer of 1990 so this is still it's interesting so it's still Soviet 
times, but actual film was wrapped in 1998 newspaper. I'm not sure how that happened, maybe. Oh, I know. I think I took some of my film to America and I, while I was working in 95, while I was working a photography specialist, I actually print my own too, using a cool Kodak equipment uh, and the Kodak chemicals. So I took a little advantage of my position to print some of my old pictures from the 90s. I think it's why, it's why it has a 98 on it. And I brought them back and I repacked them. Yep. So yeah, it's really convenient. You have um, Kiev, Kvartira, Home Vine. Look how it's misspelled wine. I spelled like vine. And of course, I ever had number. I was a nerdy, nerdy guy. Wow. Glad I kept it. My wife called me quite often horror, but it's all good. And while we're on the topic of taking pictures in the Soviet Union, so this is my slides. So I, I didn't keep any, I didn't keep any cartridges. And never thought it would be any value, but this is, you know, you develop the slide film, and then you cut it in. Well, I said we didn't develop. Huh? That's almost look like America for some reason to me. Oh, no kidding. I don't know how, but this is actually my kids in the early 2000s. Somehow I had a slide film. <laughs> and I think it's my wife's early slides. So this is a probably some of the slides I took in the US. And that's my mom. So as those I uh, said, there were too uh, complicated to develop a own. So you buy a film, take pictures, then you take it. We had a place downtown, uh, which was developing. Oh, that's my little brother. Hard to see. So we built this little sand town. And I took a picture of it. So that's as early 90s too. I think it's 91 or 92 because I remember listening to the radio about Ukrainian independence. Maybe my dad, I think so. Uh, so yeah, you develop film and then of course, this is the part I miss about the film camera. You know, since film was expensive, you take your sweet time taking pictures. You don't just shoot left and right. You want to be precise because you don't want to. That's me hanging on a tree. And then you develop, so you give it, and you have to wait a week or two. And of course, all that waiting time, you know, you're so excited and scared because you're wondering if it film turned out well or not. I kind of miss that because with the digital camera now it's instant gratification. You take a shot and you look at the screen and see if it turned out well or not. So I kind of miss that part, this waiting period, just wondering. I wonder how that shot I did in 5 a.m. when the sun was coming up. Was it good color or not? You know, was no Photoshop, no way to tweak it. So uh, my uh, friend Bogdan that helped me with videos uh, you know, he commented a long time ago, he said, you know, why your pictures from way back are so good? Looks like every shot, like a sniper shot. And now the pictures you take, they're like blah. I was like, well, because it was so expensive, especially like this Orvo um, slide film. was pricey? I don't remember, but maybe several rubles. <laughs> uh, that was experimental shot. Let me see if I can get it. So I had some spitting water out of my mouth and a guy tried to catch it. That's I'm on the front of my house in the village. So once again, you see, this is a, then you wonder if this shot turned out or not. So yeah, everything was so expensive. So you didn't want to waste your film. So every picture was just the best picture you can get at that time. Uh, here we were on a walk in the forest and we found uh, somebody killed the fox 
and skinned it right there. So that's my little brother looking sadly at this dead fox. I'll need to go through all these ones too to show you guys. There's a lot of good pictures here. A lot of good memories. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. I definitely did. It's just like a flood of memories right now. I'm <laughs> a little bit overwhelmed. Uh, thank you so much, Anna. Uh, you can't imagine, maybe you can. Uh, what a nice surprise it is. This is just amazing. Now I need to find some real uh, film and take some pictures, see how it works. I'll bring more memories. But yeah, uh, this is the camera, exactly like I used to have. Made in Kiev at Arsenal factory. And there, uh, that's the whole uh, big uh, part of my memories and life was taking pictures in Ukraine. I took this camera everywhere. Did a great job and that's, I was very surprised when I came to America for the very first time and later on, uh, all the other people I worked with from England, uh, Australia, they all use this cheap plastic, we call them Milnica soapbox cameras and did really crappy pictures, you know, barely uh, good focus and they had available great film. You can buy Kodak, you can buy Konica, you can buy Fujifilm. I had the best camera in camp and I was the poorest guy in the camp. So that's another kind of interesting, well, it's all about priorities. We didn't have a lot of money, but we bought a good stuff and uh, people from other countries, they didn't care. They spent all their money on partying and having fun. Maybe have like expensive watch. I remember one guy from England had a 100 pound Adidas watch, which I found like, why do we need to spend so much money on the watch? But I don't have a problem to spend 150 rubles on a great camera and brought great memories and they, they're still here. All those films I took pictures. You see, I'm drifting away. I already said goodbye and then started talking again. So as you see, I it's huge, huge part of my uh, life story is this camera and taking pictures, developing pictures. And this is what brought me to America, my key of 19 and my skills in developing film and developing and printing black and white pictures. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you feel like surprising me with some uh, present like that, uh, please do. <laughs> That's how I make me feel special. I'm glad that um, this is just, just so awesome. And also, I love getting your postcards. I'll be making a separate video, but I got some postcard from Finland, from Helsinki. Thank you so much. That was great. And I also got, so I'll be making separate video, one from Sydney, Australia. So that was fantastic. It, this is also dying out, all this mail uh, and stuff like that, stamps. So this is also precious. Uh, my address is Ushanka Show, PO Box 96, Berrien Springs, Michigan for 9103, United States. Okay, well, thank you so much. And once again, thanks, Anna. That was a fantastic surprise. Great, great, great. I just, I'm so excited. Bye.
And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union.